hacker, now I wear a suit. And I will talk about Qt versus HTML5, because as a suit, I get this question asked a lot. Should I be using Qt or should I be using HTML5 for my product? Seems like an innocent question. Who's got a question as well? Many of you, even those not in sales, right? You probably got it asked it by your boss, I imagine, if you're working with Qt. So it's a very frequent question. Lately, I frankly think we should not care one bit. It is really not a relevant question. It's a red herring, as they say. That's why I had that on my first slide. And here's why. Qt comes with a whole bunch of stuff. There's the, the hardware down there, the GPU and CPU. You've got some rendering on top of that, the old QPainter stuff, which is C++ mostly, and the OpenGL stuff. Uh, you can go through the GPU directly, which is nice and fast, or you can go through the CPU. So there's a nice little rendering thing there in the middle, very abstractly speaking. And then you've got some Qt modules for doing GL directly, for doing Qt Quick, for doing WebKit, for doing widgets, right? You got all of that in there, which means you have APIs for doing OpenGL directly via shaders, you can describe your UI in QML, you can describe your UI in HTML5, or you can use C++. All of it is in Qt, and frankly, which of the middle ones you choose, I think is a very, very tiny fraction of your overall decision making when you're building a product, and it's not particularly relevant for the success of it in the end. In fact, if you look at it technologically, really the same thing happens there pretty much. You've got a bit of JavaScript expressions, you've got some description language, you've got a renderer, which is more or less accelerated on the graphics card, ship stuff to the graphics card, render it through this middle bit in the, in, the, in the section there in the middle. Really not much of a difference technically these days. If you look at what an HTML5 engine does and what the QML engine does, those two are actually quite similar. So it's the question between one dialect of describing a UI based on JavaScript and another dialect of describing the UI based on JavaScript. I don't really think there is all that much of a difference. So you can really kind of have it all. If you use Qt, you have all of that at your disposal. And which one you choose really is, is not that much of a deal. Because this is usually what people do in the real world. If you're making salad, you need the onions, you need the potatoes, sorry, tomatoes. <laughs> you need the salad. So people will use all of these technologies. In any non-trivial project that we've done in the last few years, people mix and match those technologies because you need different things for different problems. You will do your mapping in OpenGL, you will make your menu overlays in QML, and you will bring in the weather applet with HTML, very likely. That's what happens in the real world. Everything else is a management boxes drawing fantasy. So if you're making a salad, you need all of Qt. It's not either HTML5 or QML. It's all of it. It's the GL, it's the shaders, it's all of the stuff that is in Qt, and of course, all of the background infrastructure as well, because making the UI is just this tiny little part of the project. All of the rest of the work is so much more than describing the UI in one dialect or another of JavaScript. Aha. If you get that reference, you're roughly my age, I would imagine. <laughs> so in closing, I think HTML5 is one thing. Qt is a superset of HTML5, not an alternative to it, and we should stop worrying about it. Thank you very much.